Hi YouTubers, Red Razor 56 here for another edition on maintaining your razor. Um, let's talk about the Polaris razor, everything in the 800 series, 800, 800S, 800XC, uh, 800 four seater. Um, not going to do this on the XP because I don't have all the tools that you need to work on an XP light out here today. So let's just concentrate on the 800S. Let's get clear on something. Uh, this is a specialty toy, um, no different than if you bought a compact farm tractor or a full-size farm tractor or a snowmobile or something like that. You do need to go out and buy some specialty tools, some things that you probably don't already have in your uh, toolbox collection. A lot of it you might. Some guys, I know there's a lot of master mechanics out there and these guys are going to scoff and say, well, we've had that for 20 years. So have I, but I've added a few extra things <clears throat> to make life easy when you're servicing your razor. And there's no doubt about it. There's a couple of things that are a real challenge. And I think probably one of the biggest complaints that I see and hear about is um, uh, oil changes. What should be routine most times turns out to be a total disaster because you're just not set up for it or you've got a bunch of SAE tools in your toolbox and uh, I hate to say it but a big majority of the Polaris Razor platform is metric. Now let's get one thing clear on oil changes. Every uh, gear case, the engine, everything. The drains are always aiming straight towards the ground. That's your front demand drive which is changed with an eight millimeter socket. Do yourself a favor, go to the big box store or auto parts store or something and pick yourself up a full set of these metric uh, Allen wrenches that are three eighths, uh, driven with a three eighths socket. And I probably have not less than 200 Allen wrenches in my uh, collection. But one thing you're gonna run into is on a standard conventional Allen wrench, the length of the short, uh, axis is never long enough to reach up underneath your skid plate and get to something and if you turn the allen wrench around let me just get one here um, if you turn the allen wrench around you know you're going up this way and the skid plate you know you're bottoming out before you actually get into it and you're not getting in tight and if you turn an allen wrench around the other way and try to use the long dimension uh, you know, this steel flexes, and when you're trying to break something loose, the Allen wrench is actually twisting. You don't may not necessarily feel it but or see it, but you can feel it when you're trying to put a, you know, a box end wrench down here and turn it. Allen wrenches are great for stuff that's right out in the open, but for these particular oil changes, take my word for it. Go get a set of metric Allen 3-8 drive sockets. Um, eight millimeter will take out the drain plug on the front demand drive and also the fill plug on the side. All other oil drains, that's your transfer case, your transmission, your engine, and your differential are all on the bottom except the rear, uh, and we call it a differential, it's not, that's a, that's a bad nomenclature for that device, it's, a, it's the rear angle drive. That actually drains out the bottom but it comes out the side. So the drain plugs down on the side and it's like 13 millimeter. Uh, one of the things that is absolutely a nightmare to do is when you refill the transmission and the transfer case on the side of the, uh, when you're on the driver's side and you're just ahead of the rear wheel, take my word for it, when you're going to do a lubrication service on this thing, jack the back end up and remove that left rear driver's rear wheel and it gives you so much more access and get some good light in there. And uh, some of the plugs are uh, fill till you spill, and others are fill until it runs out a predetermined level hole. And for any of you that have read your, uh, your manuals on this stuff, it, it, it's the most ridiculous drawing. You know, it's not in the correct attitude in the machine. You know, this is the rear differential or the rear angle drive right here. And actually this stuff goes in the machine kind of like this, but upside down. So, you know, it's kind of, I can't even do it. it. It, It's on there where, 
the, the drawings they used were wrong. It's almost like a reverse image. And when you're laying there trying to figure out which which is which, it can drive you crazy. But the one uh, main gear case uh, level plug is 13 millimeter hex. And it's very difficult to get to with straight in tools. It can be done. Wave down your snap on tool salesman. This is a 13 millimeter wiggle socket, you know, U joint socket, whatever you want to call it, with a quarter inch drive. And with a long enough extension, it gives you just that much flex on the socket that you need where you can actually operate the ratchet and get that plug out of there. I'm going to give you a warning. Anything that's using these size plugs right here, it's aluminum plugs and aluminum cases. They strip out extremely easy. When you grip your ratchet to put the plugs back in, and, and I'm an aluminum mechanic from years ago, and it was a common problem. I never grip my ratchets out here when I'm tightening something. I always grip my ratchets right up here on the head end, and you give it that one twist and you're done. The plug is not gonna fall out of there. We experimented over the years with other equipment <laughs> where we could ride on a closed circuit and we would actually put plugs in hand tight and then just use the extension to drive the socket and give it a good twist. And we would ride for the entire cycle of the oil change. You know, 30 hours, 40 hours of riding time, something like that. Never lost a drain plug. Okay, let's move on to engine oil. Let me go back over this again. Six millimeter is right out the bottom. That changes your engine oil. 13 millimeter on a flex will get the uh, level plug out of the transmission. Engine oil. Forget those cup filter removal tools that go over the end. They don't work. You can't get them in there. Go to the big box store. Get yourself an inexpensive pair of pliers that will adjust to fit just about any filter in your stable. Whether it's your automobile, your truck, farm tractor, riding lawnmower, or your razor. Gets right on the end of the filter. One or two quick flicks of the wrist loosens the filter. When you put it back on, I go hand tight and I put my wrench on there and I go up about an eighth of a turn. Filter's not going to come off. Funnels. This particular funnel here came out of, I bought one of those little 2,000 watt suitcase generators, like a, I don't know, something from Tractor Supply or Orschelin or something. This funnel came with it, and it's got kind of a puny end on it here. It's only like three-eighths of an inch exhaust port for, for it. But you can go into so many different places with this funnel and stop the crying when it comes to ref, you know, refilling your transmissions and so forth. A flex funnel. If you don't have one of these in your stable, you got a problem. It's just a very universal deal it goes way in has a nice long reach the pipe will fit virtually any opening that you're doing whether it's a transmission or an engine and uh, this particular one had a screen in it and it fell out so we need to put another screen in there good idea to have a screen this is a cool item here again go to your tractor supply auto parts store peruse the aisles to where they've got oil change kits and stuff this thing's really cool because it threads on to the end of all the modern wide mouth um, synthetic oil bottles, even the one gallon jugs, which I don't know if I'd recommend that because that could get away from you in a hurry. And it's got an on off feature here where you can twist this and it closes. So if you think you're getting near your limit, you can just reach up and, <clears throat> and close it. And don't be afraid to ask for help when you're refilling these things. They can be a real pain to, to get the lubricants in where they belong. Uh, this little device right here, about 10 bucks, something like that. Graduated cylinder on the side, half pints. It's got ounces. It's actually got the, the metric milliliters and everything. And on your transmission and transfer case, I think they take a total of 36 ounces. And the breakup is like 24 and 12 well, when you're filling them, especially the fill till you spill, um, you could accidentally put three or four ounces too much oil in there, and by the time you realize it, you got a big crapped up mess on the bottom of the, you know, under the razor on the skid pan and everything. Uh, this little dandy here, this is kind of nice. I like this. Allows you to fill it up, 
to either the 12 ounce or 24 or whatever. And then again, it's got that valve on the bottom that allows you to do that. And you can just slip the hose into the, to the uh, fill port on the, either the transmission or the um, transfer case. And you just open that up and you just sit there and watch the oil level go right on down in. You can see if you're using Polaris oils, of course, they're purple on the center two gear cases. And you can see when it goes and now you're within about an ounce of where that thing needs to be. And that's probably good enough. A variety of funnels with this clear plastic hose that's on here. You can slip that hose onto this funnel and make it even more versatile. One more thing before I quit. In your trail ready toolbox, uh, a set of jumper cables can really get you and your partner, your riding buddies, whoever, can really get somebody out of a jam. Conventional battery jumper cables are usually way too large and way too bulky. <clears throat> so what I did was I took some um, THHN. This is just regular house wire, like you'd wire a commercial building, not Romex. Um, and it's uh, stranded. And then I just got some alligator clips that, uh, from the auto parts store that would work for battery chargers. Soldered them on the end, got two reds, and then I, all I had was black wire, so I just made sure that I put a little bit of red tape on the end of each of the positives to help cut down the possibility of a reverse polarity connection. But there's 13 and a half feet of jumper cables that I can wad up, and you can see how big they are in relationship to that funnel or something. They can be wadded up and rolled in to your rear carrier toolbox or put up under the front hood or find a place to Velcro them on the roll cage. A set of inexpensive jumper cables on the trail might save your day. Um, add up some ideas that you want. We'll make another video. I actually have more specialty tools, but this is some of the stuff that guys are really complaining about that makes life miserable. You wouldn't spend more than $25 for all the goodies that I have laid out there. Make your life easy on the next oil change. Red Razor 56 saying live to ride another day.